This video is going to demonstrate how to calculate the formal charge on the atoms of a molecule for which you have already determined the Lewis structure. So let's start with the definition of formal charge. So formal charge is defined as, and it's abbreviated as FC, it's defined as the number of valence electrons on an atom minus the sum of the number of unbonded electrons plus one half the number of electrons in bonds. And there's a somewhat simpler way to remember this, which is formal charge is equal to still the, sum, the number of valence electrons minus the sum of the number of lines coming off of an atom and the number of dots on an atom. So I have three different molecules for which I will do examples of how to calculate formal charge. The first here is PCl3. And you calculate formal charge on the atoms individually. So first we'll calculate formal charge on the phosphorus, and then we'll calculate formal charge for the chlorine. So for the phosphorus, let's do formal charge for the phosphorus atom, so in parentheses P for phosphorus, is equal to the number of valence electrons, which for phosphorus is five, that's from the periodic table, minus the number of unbonded electrons. So if you look at phosphorus, phosphorus has two unbonded electrons. So that's two plus one half of the number of electrons in bonds around phosphorus. So when we're looking at formal charge, we are ignoring the actual atom, the identity of the atom that the phosphorus is bonded to. We only care about how many electrons are in these bonds. So in this case, there would be two, four, six electrons in the bonds. So one half times six. And so you can see that is equal to five minus five, which is zero. So the formal charge on phosphorus is zero, and we can denote that by putting a little zero next to the phosphorus. Now you can see if we did this by the other definition, which is the number of lines plus dots, we'll do it like that. So we say the number of valence electrons minus the number of lines. So on phosphorus, there are three lines coming off of it, plus the number of dots on phosphorus, which is two, and that's zero. So I am going to proceed through this, through the rest of this um, tutorial using this definition of formal charge, but feel free to use either one. So then the next step which would be to calculate the formal charge on chlorine. So we can pick any chlorine. So let's pick this one right here. So we'll say the formal charge on chlorine is equal to number, the number of valence electrons on chlorine, which is seven, minus the number of lines, which is one, plus the number of dots, which is six. So the formal charge on chlorine is zero. So put a zero there. And if you look, you can see as far as lines and dots go, this chlorine looks like this chlorine, which looks like this chlorine. So all of these chlorine atoms will have a formal charge of zero. So this isn't a very exciting molecule as far as formal charge goes. What is important to realize is that the sum of the formal charges, the sum of the formal charges, has to be equal to the total charge on the molecule. So PCl3 is a molecule that doesn't have a charge on it. If it had a charge, up here we'd have a minus one or a minus two or a plus one. This molecule wasn't, you know, didn't have any type of charge written with it, so it is an uncharged molecule. And so the sum of our formal charges, it's zero plus, you know, zero for each chlorine, zero, um, which is correct. So if we had calculated our, our formal charges and summed them up and our formal charge was anything but zero, in this case, we would have known we made a mistake in our formal charge calculation. 
So one thing that I want to emphasize is that when we do our formal charge calculations, in no place do we care about the identity of the atoms that anything is bound to. So when we did the calculation for phosphorus, we didn't care that this was a chlorine. This could have been a bromine or anything else. All we cared were how many bonds the phosphorus had on it and how many lone pairs the phosphorus had on it. So when you're thinking about formal charge, you're really thinking about an atom looking like this. What you care about are how many lone pairs are on the atom. You care how many bounded, how many things are bounded to the atom, but you don't care about what the identity is of the, of the atom at the end of this bond. So just remembering that, let's go on to the next example over here. So here, let's start with the formal charge on the hydrogens, because that's pretty simple. So we have one valence electron with hydrogen minus the sum of the number of lines. You can see there's one line on hydrogen, on any given hydrogen, plus the number of dots, no lone pairs on hydrogen. So the formal charge is zero. And we didn't care which hydrogen we were looking at, right? Because every hydrogen looks the same. So it doesn't matter whether hydrogen's bound to carbon or hydrogen's bound to nitrogen. The number of bonds on the hydrogen is identical. It's only one. So we can go and fill in zero on all of our hydrogens. So then the formal charge for the carbon equals four valence electrons minus the number of lines, which on carbon there's four here, and no lone pairs, no dots. So again, the formal charge is zero. And the formal charge for nitrogen equals five valence electrons minus the number of bonds or the number of lines is three plus two dots. And again, the formal charge is zero. And this is good because the sum of our formal charges is going to be zero plus zero plus zero plus a whole bunch of zeros for the hydrogen. So the sum of the formal charges is zero. And since this is an uncharged molecule, we would need the formal charges to sum to zero. So for the final example, let's look at this molecule. Now notice this is a charged molecule, has a charge of minus one. So we are going to expect that our formal charges are going to sum to minus one this time. So formal charge on hydrogen equals zero. I'm not going to calculate it because we just calculated the formal charge on hydrogen right here. And you see this hydrogen looks exactly like this hydrogen, so we don't have to calculate it. We also don't need to calculate the formal charge on carbon, but I'm going to do it anyhow. But look, carbon with four bonds has a formal charge of zero. Even though this is a double bond and these are single bonds, there are still four bonds coming off of carbon. And to prove it, I'll just do the calculation. So we say formal charge on carbon equals four valence electrons minus the number of bonds or the number of lines, which is four, plus no dots. So that is equal to zero. So I'll put my formal charge on carbon as zero. And oxygens, we haven't encountered any oxygens yet, so we need to calculate those formal charges. Now in this case, there are two separate oxygens. So there's a double bonded oxygen. So I'm going to do it like this. Two, bond, two lines for a double bond as opposed to an equal sign. It's not an equal sign here. So the formal charge on the double bonded oxygen, which is this one, is equal to the number of valence electrons, which is six, minus the number of bonds or the number of lines, two lines, plus four dots, so that's zero. So assuming we did everything correctly so far, we are, this formal charge on this oxygen come, should come out to be not minus one because all of our formal charges have to sum to minus one. So let's check. 
So we'll say the formal charge on the single bonded oxygen is equal to six valence electrons still minus this time there's only one line or one bond and this time there are six dots so we have six minus seven that is equal to minus one. So sure enough this formal charge on this oxygen ended up being minus one and the sum of our formal charges is equal to zero plus zero plus zero minus one equals negative one. So to summarize a few important points about formal charges, the sum of the formal charges has to be equal to the, to the um, charge on the molecule. When you calculate formal charges, you don't care what lies at the end of the bonds. You're calculating the formal charge on an atom, and that only depends on the number of bonds and the number of lone pairs on that atom. And then the last thing that I'd like to emphasize is that um, once you determine that hydrogen with one bond has a formal charge of zero, that calculation is going to stay the same from one molecule to the next molecule. Likewise, you know, carbon, once you, once you prove to yourself carbon with four bonds has a formal charge of zero, you don't have to calculate it every time. Um, so I hope this has, information has been helpful, and now it's time for you to go try this yourself.